In today's video, I'm going to show you how to select a color and quickly and easily change it into another color. This is a really fun technique and it's surprisingly really, really simple to do too. And today is St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone who celebrates. And in honor of St. Patrick's Day, every color I select is going to be changed into green. So there's a few photos I'm going to go through, there's a few images, and everything's going to be turned green for St. Patrick's Day because why not? But we're also going to do some more advanced techniques like mask and adjustment layers, which is a lot of fun, or at least it's a lot of fun to me. Let's see what we're going to make green. So let's get into it. This week here in Northern Ireland, we had some snow. This here is not one of my photos, but if you want to follow along, there's a link to this photo in the description below. Feel free to click it, put in your details, and I will email you this brilliant photo. If you want to follow along, that would be good. Seeing as St. Patrick's Day, or if you're watching this at another time, it's still a useful tutorial. We want to change this guy's coat green. Sure, why not? And it's, it's really simple to do that. And I'm going to show you a few different examples, but we'll maybe spend the most of the tutorial on this here image. And uh, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And the important thing to remember when you're doing something like this, it doesn't work in every image. Some photos, it works better than others, but I think it'll work really well in this photo because we've got a really high contrast color, real bright kind of yellow, slightly orange coat here. And I think this'll, this'll stand out really well and on the right hand side we're going to go to the adjustment studio and the great thing about the adjustment studio in affinity photo 2 is it kind of gives you a bit of a preview of what this adjustment will make. You can see the gradient map there does some mad stuff. 8SL is the adjustment we want to apply to this picture. Hue, saturation and lightness and if we click on it nothing happens apart from a bit of a toolbar down here on the right hand corner. I'll maybe click the adjustment studio just to hide that and if we click in to this color wheel this is where the magic happens and I'm looking for this kind of orange yellow and the closest we've got is this yellow dot. Just by tapping that yellow dot now if we move this hue slider you'll see if by magic we can change it to a whole host of colors doesn't look too good there with the pink if we bring it back a little that looks pretty good although this guy will be absolutely scundered scundered is that a word you know maybe it's a northern Ireland word scundered means embarrassed is probably the closest word this guy will be really embarrassed if we change it to pink we won't change it to pink red kind of looks pretty cool this works so so well it's, it's amazing this photo we can change it to a bit of a deeper orange that's close to what we had it and green Green looks not too bad. That there doesn't look bad at all. And, and that's us nearly done. If we move down to saturation, you can make the saturation a wee bit brighter, which you generally don't want to do. It just won't make it look as realistic. Normally I like bringing the saturation down just a little, and I think that's not looking too bad. Luminance, we're going to muck about with that again. Maybe just bring it down ever so slightly and if we go up to the layer studio here you can see we have now a hsl adjustment added and simply by tapping this dot we can turn it on and off so that's what it was that's what we changed it to and this is really really impressive let's just do that again that's what it was that's what it is now now the only thing is if we zoom in nice and close to his face you can actually see some of the hair in his face has actually changed slightly to green because there's some orange tones in this guy's face and there's a way around that and if you're not quite happy with it i know it's not that noticeable but if it was me it catches the eye especially when you turn it on and off you can just see there's a bit of a green tinge especially even on the chin here and I wouldn't be too content with saying that's that image done. And even in the cheek here, hopefully in YouTube, you can pick it up a little. If I zoom in a little bit more, you can maybe start to see a bit of this color being changed. I'll turn it on and off. Yeah, definitely turn it on and off. You can see it. And that, that's okay, or it's not okay, but it's okay because we're going to change it. We can actually mask on an adjustment layer. And if we just click this plus icon, click mask layer, and then hold the mask layer and move it down to the adjustment layer. Now, if we paint on this mask, it will affect what can be seen and not seen on the adjustment layer. Mask and masking is a big, big topic. I went into it in quite a bit of detail in Affinity Photo 1 and Please feel free to check out that tutorial because a lot of what we cover now is covered in that. It's just the interface is updated in Affinity Photo 2, but most of the stuff you should be able to carry over and, and apply it to Affinity Photo 2. But I will make a video on masking, maybe soonish, and I'll, I'll look into it quite in detail on Affinity Photo 2. Masking is so, so powerful and I've got a course coming out soon and masking is going to be a big, big part of that course and some of the things you can do in it. But enough about masking or enough about talking about it. For masking, we'll want to then use our paintbrush. And the thing about masking is nighttime, if we change our color 
the black. Black, if you remember, black's like nighttime. You can't see anything in the night. And if you want to make sure our masking layer is selected, if we simply just cover over that, and I'll maybe bring that up a wee, a wee bit, you can see more. If I move over here, you can really see what happens with masking. And over here, you'll see that's now masking out the color. Remember, we're painting black which means you can't see it. If we change it to white, say we, we do want this hoodie, that color, we're going to now paint. And hopefully you're getting your head around this. All we're doing, I'll maybe just click on that mask layer and delete it. At the minute, we've got an adjustment layer and I simply want to mask out some of that adjustment layer. Now, I can use the eraser tool. I can do the same kind of thing, to be honest with you. So why would you use mask over eraser? Well, now there's no way of getting that green back. There's no way of getting that adjustment layer back. I've lost all that information. I'm going to do two fingers to undo. That's why you use mask, because if you make a mistake, you can get that green back. So hit the plus icon, click and mask, tap and drag the mask onto our adjustment layer. Nothing's happened at the minute until we go to the paintbrush. Make sure if, if you do white, nothing's going to happen. If you see here in this wee icon, nothing's happening because it's white on white. White, when you're painting ma on masks, white is like daylight. You can see everything. And at the minute we can see everything, the magic really happens if we turn it to black. And now we're just really hiding this here adjustment layer. And we're going to turn that on and off. And again, I don't want orange. We'll change it to white. And now we'll just paint that back in. And that's the powerful thing masks have over the eraser tool. If we erase stuff out, you'll never get it back. And that's why quite often in certainly big projects or all projects really are big projects of mine. I'm always masking stuff because mistakes happen or maybe you want to add stuff in or out. So we'll change this back to black and then we'll just simply just go over this. And this is feathering really, really nice. And hopefully you can pick up on YouTube what's happening here because if I zoom in quite big, we'll see that's it before, that's it after. We're just taking away some of the green. And there we are. We've turned this guy's coat into a nice St. Patrick green. And I think that looks really well. If you didn't know, if you showed that to a friend or somebody else, they'd just think it's a nice photo. They wouldn't think that we have totally changed the color of it, or if you show them side by side, I think you do really well to know which is which. And if it's too bright for you, just double tap in the adjustment layer, click into this, and we can bring the saturation down just a little, and maybe even that just makes it a little bit more realistic. That's what it was. That's what it is now. And one other quick thing, I'm happy with that. If you just want to have a bit of fun, just for having a bit of fun sake, if we go into the paintbrush and very quickly, what we're going to do is color this guy's hood in. I'm just going very, very quick. And very quickly, you can, you can kind of see at a glance, that doesn't look too bad. And if we move this down, we'll maybe, we'll maybe try coloring in his zip. And I'm going very, very quick. And let me color this bit of the zip in and this bit of the zip in. And it's, it's beginning to look now not too realistic. But if we move the hardness down a wee bit, maybe I'll just blend in a little bit better. Or you could even give them kind of bring the brush size up kind of the top of this top of his shoulders. That's looking a wee bit better. We can give him racing stripes down here. And you can do lots of mad stuff with masks and that looks semi-ridiculous. We'll put it back to what it was, but it just shows you how powerful masks can be and how powerful the hue, saturation and lightness adjustment layer can be. We'll move it back. And just for a bit of fun, as it is St. Patrick's Day, I want to see, there we go, two fingers to undo to back to where we are. Really happy with that. But as I was saying, as it's St. Patrick's Day, I'm now going to very quickly do the same technique on a few different photos just to show you how fun and how quick this technique can be. Of course, here's Iron Man. And if I zoom out a little, Iron Man's red. This attempt to make him green for St. Patrick's. So we've clicked on the adjustment layer. We're going all the way down to HSL. We'll click on this Iron Man's red, so we'll change the red 
and we'll we'll bring it over and make them all sorts of different colors but we're gonna try to get a nice green and i didn't touch on this in the last picture and really some of iron man is still bleeding some of this is nearly pinky so if we move this slider you can actually see it's affecting those pinks and if we move it even more you'll see the greens are affecting the blue and i'm kind of quite like that and i don't really want it to affect his helmet bit here so i'll maybe move that down just so it's quite gold still and with two fingers i'll move this image of iron man to the side just so we can see what's happening lightness or saturation I might be tempted just to bring the saturation up a little luminous let me bring it down slightly and this is always the fun bit before and after so there is green st patrick iron man that's what it was that's what it is now that was done in complete seconds we've still got the gold of iron man iron man on st patrick's day that's what he looks like let's do another photo straight away you can see where we're going here and this should be a very quick and easy one too again we'll go to the adjustment studio we'll go down to hue saturation lightness brilliant shows you a preview of what's happening we'll click into it the color here is yellow again and we'll make it green for st patrick's day and i think we're going to do better than that andrew Maybe make the saturation up a little, luminous down a little. That's looking quite nice. For me in this picture, the red's standing out far too much. So I would actually click on the red here and change the red colour to something that just maybe, maybe not green, but maybe that bluey, bluey teal and bring the saturation down a little. And again, within seconds, look what we've done. We had an image, if we, if we go back to the layer studio, we've had an image that was all yellow, a little bit of red, now it's green and teal let's do another one spider-man obviously spider-man here is watching the st patrick's day parade in new york city and just for that he, he wants to he wants to get into the spirit of things so let's make him green so we're going to click on the adjustment studio again come down to hue saturation lightness we'll click red this time this should be another quick one look at that Look at, he's a bit Green Goblin-esque looking there, actually. Uh, let's see if we move the saturation down a little. Yeah, he's looking very Green Goblin-esque. Uh, we could have used the, the blue, but then the blue of the building would have been affected. And actually, down here, you can see some of the city, if we do before and after, there's tinges of green. We could mask that out, but it is... Yeah, it is the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and I'm sure there's lots of greenery about. But that's Spider-Man watching the New York St. Patrick's Day Parade. Let's do another one. Here's my kids at Harry Potter Studios in the summer with Ron Weasley's car, or Ron Weasley's dad's car, really, isn't it? So again, we'll go to the Adjustment Studio, down to Hue, Saturation, Lightness. This is nearly the exact colour we're looking, so this should be a very handy one also and sometimes you have to adjust look at that that's maybe that's maybe too green bring the saturation down a little that's not bad even the seats have changed color that's it before that's it after this is what mr wheezy's car looks like on st patrick's day let's do another one quickly because I'm, I'm actually having a lot of fun here my favorite film is back to the future marty here has went to the future and he's actually landed on St. Patrick's Day, so we don't want him to wear a, a red jacket. We want him to wear a green jacket. And again, we'll just go to the Adjustment Studio, HSL, click on red. And again, this will there'll be a few things happening here, but we just want the jacket. So we'll maybe mask Marty's jacket out or the garage out. And you can actually see what's happening. He's, he's turning all green. He's painted his face and everything for St. Patrick's Day, which we don't quite want. So we'll have to do a little bit of masking here. If we do before and after, and the reason this is happening is if we go before, there's a lot of red tones in Marty's face and obviously the garage and there's different things here. So what I would do in this case is do a mask layer and if I do an empty mask layer and bring it down to the HSL, now the only thing that I paint, whereas before, this is another good teaching tip, before we did a mask layer this time i chose empty mask layer so at the minute nothing 
is being affected by this mask when you turn this mask on and off or sorry something is being affected because at, at the minute everything's black everything's at night really if you remember the analogy at the minute if we have this on it's night time so nothing can be seen and we're going to paint on white and white when it comes to the masking world means revealing stuff so we'll bring our brush size down oh i haven't clicked white yep that should be us now so now we'll simply paint in marty's jacket he's went to the future it's on st patrick's day he would look out of place on a on a, on a red t-shirt and, and, and biff might be hey what's that guy doing on St. Patrick's Day with a red jacket. He, he must be from the past. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm getting carried away. That's a script for another idea or video for another idea. Look at that. Within seconds, we've got Marty McFly. I'm tempted to do the accent because we do know that he's, uh, Marty McFly has Irish blood in him because Marty McFly in Back to the Future 3, he puts on a bit of an accent. And this is Marty McFly in the future saying, Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone watching. I like my red jacket, but I really like my green jacket. And Andrew, you're doing this, and I'm sure you're losing subscribers. If you're still with me, stick with me, because we'll go for one more example, and I'll lose the accent. This one here is going to hurt, because I've got my three kids. This is a poster I did some time ago with my three kids, dressed up in Gryffindor outfits, and we're going to change them into Slytherins, or at least we're going to change the red into Slytherin green. Oh, I hope my kids don't see this one. So we're going to go to adjustments again, go down to hue, saturation and lightness, pick the red color and let's see how it looks. And again, their faces are heavily affected in this. Let me bring this down a wee bit. Sometimes it's just about playing about depending on what the picture looks like and I think that'll look quite good once we just do these few things and again we'll just go into the layer studio we'll click on the plus icon we'll click click empty mask and again everything disappears and that's because we need to bring the mask layer on to this HSL adjustment layer we'll click the mask layer we'll go to our paint brush we are on black we need to change it to white. And now maybe if I, if I zoom in, well, look at that. Slytherin green. Well, my kids won't be happy when they see this. Now, I'm just changing the colors. I'm not actually, they're still in Gryffindor. Don't worry, kids. We've still got the Gryffindor badge. But at a quick look, they'll think they're in Slytherin. And who would want to be in the house of Slytherin? So look at that. It's maybe a little bit too bright, but it's such a cool effect. Oh, you missed a bit down here, Andrew. And actually in this, I put a bit of a, a red glow on each of, uh, oh, some of the background there. A bit of a red glow. Well, that's something I'm going to actually cover in my online course. Just how to do these highlights and these types of things. That's far too much. Even there, that's maybe too much in the ear. I would, I would bring that down a little, but I'll do it in that bit and I'll leave that bit red. So straight away, the whole picture's changed up. That's what it was. That's what it is now. Double tap on this to come back into it just to see if we can change it to different colours. But we'll stick with green. We'll maybe, yeah, maybe just bring it down a little. It was maybe just two in your face screen just click off that layer to make sure that disappears and there we have it we've had a lot of fun in this tutorial although we've had a lot of fun we've also learned an awful lot as well of how you can easily change the colors and again the brighter colors the more the colors that stand out is better worked on so there you have it hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you weren't put off by my dodgy accent and some of my dodgy pictures being turned green but this was a lot of fun try it out for yourself i think you'll be surprised and impressed how quick and how easy you can do this technique for yourself and if you don't already know i'm bringing out a course soon and don't worry probably not going to do too many accents maybe no accents maybe i will i don't know haven't started recording it yet but there's a course coming out soon maybe in about two months it's going to be a lot of fun if that's something that might interest you there's a link in the description below where you can sign up 
to get updates of when that course is going to come out and I'm going to be offering big discounts for maybe the first few weeks of that course release. So click the link, sign up if that's something you're interested in. Happy St. Patrick's Day again. I'm off today, my wife's off and the kids are off also. So we're going to go out and maybe do something or maybe just take it easy. I'm not too sure yet, but we're going to have a great day regardless. And if you want to learn more and dive deeper into masks, please check out this video here. Thanks for watching.